RFK. So yes. RFK, uh, you know, he's wants to challenge Joe Biden to be the Democrat nominee for president. And, um, you know, Frank couldn't be worse. So you know what? <laughs> Let him run. Let him try. Um, and RFK has been a real vaccine skeptic, a real lockdown skeptic, a yep. real pandemic skeptic, um, and a real advocate for um, human rights and anti-coercion and just letting people live their lives. And apparently, um, hindsight being 2020, he's been right the whole time. And he's very outspoken. And he will, to his credit, speak to people on the other side of the debate. I think that might be a new development since people on his side are very close minded. And so the people like conservatives and libertarian minded people, we want to talk to everybody because we want to challenge our own ideas. I like to test my ideas to make sure that I'm right. The left knows that their ideas can't stand up to scrutiny. So forget the testing. <laughs> so he um, RFK went on Joe Biden or went on Joe Biden, went on Joe Rogan, excuse me. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Anyways, can you imagine if Biden had a podcast? I would tune into that 100%. But, oh, me too. <laughs> but he went on Joe Rogan, talked about vaccines. And then so this other very strange uh, doctor, I think um, Peter Hotez, um, people online were challenging to him to debate RFK. People were putting up money. I think like Dave Rubin said he'd put up money and... Um, you know, there are other like more prominent people in the conservative ecosystem who are saying like, hey, if you actually debate him, we'll put up some money for the debate. And um, now, yeah. So anyways, it says you, he, now he's saying he doesn't want to debate him. Of course not, because <laughs> you can't. Um, but anyways, we've got an MSNBC host now saying, oh, definitely don't debate him. Um because I don't know, you don't talk to these people. They're too stupid to talk to. And I'm like, if you think we're stupid, then you shouldn't have any problem. Just yeah. Walking across us with your big ideas. Um, and just pay attention uh, again. I don't want to be like this. Cause I already did this with the trans snoops uh, a couple segments back. But just look at this fella here, the guy in the white coat in his office. You're not at work, buddy. you're not in the lab. So don't appeal to the white coat. <laughs> But just look at him for a second. And then uh, can somebody dig up a picture of Rogan and RFK once we're done watching this video? Okay, go. RFK has contributed to a culture, a vaccine misinformation culture that has led to the deaths, as you say, of hundreds of thousands of lives. And yet he's the one being celebrated by tech billionaires like Musk and Jack Dorsey while you're being smeared and defamed. And I would say, I don't know if you've agreed to debate or not. My advice is not to. And people might find that surprising because I wrote a book about debate. But I just think there's a time and a place for a debate. I don't think a historian of World War II should debate a Holocaust denier. I mean, just think, you know, that's, that's my analogy here. Like, I don't think wow. these debates between experts and cranks do anything other than elevate the cranks. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are certain things you debate. I understand what a debate about 18th century Enlightenment philosophy is and, and debating Rousseau and Bishop, Bishop Barclay. I understand what political debates are. But in science, we don't typically do debates. What we do is we write scientific yeah, you do. papers, <laughs> we present our findings in front of a critical audience of our peers to solicit their their input and, and suggestions. But it's you know, one doesn't typically debate science, maybe the one-off discussion of evolution versus creationism and that sort of thing but that's not what we do in science you don't wow. debate things in science you don't test your ideas in science is that what he's saying no that's what we do that's how you advance science that's how you advance them yeah i think the real fear here uh sheila is he's worried about being confounded by logic and not being able to give a valid response to uh, someone uh, who is not in his corner, like some mainstream media shill. Um, I'll tell you that it's neither here nor there, but that guy sure looks like the villain in the 1967 Matt Helm movie, The Ambushers, <laughs> for whatever reason. It's worse. <laughs> yeah. It gets worse. Okay, okay. so. And I, I don't mean to do this, oh, but no. <laughs> we did have for a time a morbidly obese health minister here in Alberta. And I was like, come on, like, come on. 
And then there was that one in Belgium who was like, I think she's dying. I think she's lost some toes <laughs> to diabetes. She was the health minister in Belgium. Um, and I think it was Dave Hancock was our old health minister under Redford. He actually decided to get healthy when they appointed him to the health ministry. He was like, I got to lose some weight. Yeah, pick your health leader. America, uh, Canada, Britain, and the... The, we could put Sarah Hoffman in there too. But anyways, the, these, okay. So are we catching a theme here? These people trying to tell you what's healthy for you and live your life. They all sort of look a certain way and they are all, let's be honest, dying. So same thing here. So this doctor who refuses to debate, uh, I, we've got the tweet from Elijah Schaefer. Schaffer. There's RFK. I think he's in his 60s. He looks deadly. He yeah. looks great. Whatever he's doing, keep doing it. Skin looks great. He looks young. He looks strong. Like you can see his pecs through his shirt. Um, and this is the doctor on the other side. He looks like your uh, post-menopausal great aunt Wanda again. Um, he's the guy telling you to get the vaccine because he knows what's healthy for you. And we shouldn't listen to Rogan and we shouldn't listen to this, this RFK because they don't know what they're talking about with health. And, what? and Sheila, here's why I'm going to say to the audience, why what you just said is not an ad hominem attack, because it's much like, say you are a personal trainer, folks, if you went to the gym and you hired a personal trainer and that personal trainer was 400 pounds and completely out of shape, would do you even book one session? Similarly with a doctor, to be morbidly obese, I'm sorry, but we know there are ways to safely lose weight and get back down to a healthy weight. I mean, my goodness, Sheila, we have what I call fat reality TV. We have multiple shows on right there. Uh, the Thousand Pound Sisters, My 600 Pound Life, uh, Super Sized, you name it. it. It's a whole genre, but they're all one and the same in that it is people that are dealing with horrific, morbidly obese issues, going on a diet and an exercise regime to lose literally hundreds of pounds. So we know we can be done. And we know that a doctor knows especially that it can be done. So what is this? Laziness? A lack of yeah. discipline that they can't yes. stop eating? You know? And by the way, if anyone's saying, oh, look at the fat man uh, preaching. Yeah, okay. I admit it. I'd love to lose another 25 pounds. I'm fat. That's why I put my ricotta cheese candy ass on a bike almost every second day and cycle 40 kilometers, even when all the uh, the broadcast uh, Karens are going, oh, we have a high UV index. Stay indoor and drink lots of water and, and stay in the shade. <laughs> no, 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 no. So where there's a will, there's a way. And if you're part of the medical establishment, much like if you're part of the, the personal trainer establishment, and you look like a, a physical wreck, uh, as the saying goes, a doctor, heal thyself. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've got three kids. I've gained and lost more weight than a lot of people <laughs> in their <laughs> life, right? Like, it, yes, it's, uh, but it's something you got to work at. You have to be disciplined with your food and your exercise and your lifestyle. You have to be. And like, I'm not here to give anybody medical advice, but those people are, and they look terrible. Um, we've got a, a clip of, I think, that same doctor on Rogan making, like, the craziest claim. And this goes to your point, David, that it is a laziness. Um, he would rather take a shortcut and advise people to take a shortcut that in the end, we now know didn't really work yeah. rather than do the hard thing and get your health in order. And we do know that people who died of COVID or who were hospitalized because of COVID, they had normally three comorbidities and almost all of those comorbidities were uh, obesity related. So renal disease, uh, diabetes, heart disease, um, it was all... All of those things. So normally those are lifestyle related issues. By and large, more people are type 2 diabetes than type 1. And there's one way to deal with type 2 diabetes. Um, and that's lose weight and get your health in check. But he was telling people, don't get your health in check. If you have a choice between getting your health in check and avoiding all those other illnesses plus COVID-19, 
or taking the vaccine. He told people to take the vaccine, which didn't work. Let's watch. Do you take care of your immune system in other ways? Do you take probiotics? Are you cautious about your diet? Um, I'm not as cautious about my diet as I should be. I'm a junk food a whole. No kidding. Uh, actually, well, that seems like a terrible thing for your health. <laughs> it, it is a terrible thing for my health, and something my wife is uh, working on. But that seems basis. ridiculous for someone who works with health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's sometimes, going on with you, man? Sometimes, man, I just don't sometimes. get it right. <laughs> How often? What? How often? How often do I steal a bag of chips or something How often like do that? You eat garbage. Uh, I don't day? know. No, no. Hopefully not every day. But you know, hopefully so, not every day. Yeah, maybe a couple of times a every week. Every day. Oh. That's what with day. Rachel, my uh, my daughter with autism. That's like our thing is to go to the uh, it's called the burger joint or to um, Shake Shack to get mm-hmm. a to get a cheeseburger. We'll sneak, sneak some fries. So, mm. so you live in large. We call it. Like that mouth pleasure so much, you're willing to sacrifice a little bit. Of I health. am, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I can, I have to concede that's the case. Well, there's, uh, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but there's a, a large body of data that connects poor diet to a host of diseases. Mm-hmm. That seems like a t- crazy decision for a guy in your line of work. There you go. Sometimes the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the, it's not all brain. It's. Uh, it, it's something else. But I mean, if you ate healthy food, I mean, you, the thing is your body starts craving healthy food. You start feeling. Yeah, no, no question. Results. No question about it. Do you take vitamins? I don't take vitamins. Really? Yeah. I don't wow. Think, I don't think they do. I don't think they're needed. Because most in the, Ameri- in the American. What? In the American. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You don't think they're needed? They're needed if your diet food? is garbage. Well, think- ho- hopefully I'm not only eating junk food. Okay, right? but you know, there's a large body of clinical mm-hmm. research on the efficacy of vitamins, mm-hmm. especially vitamins D, vitamins I, I B, have taken stuff. vitamin D for periods. For the periods. recommendation of my internist. Yeah. And, yeah. What about essential fatty acids, which mm-hmm. are great for your brain, fish oil? Uh, all these different things that are fantastic. Uh, for I'm, I'm not going ar- to. I'm not going to argue with you. What you is got, going you, on you, with you, you doctor? Got, you got it. Hand, you got, on, you got it over me. Yeah, you got to yeah. sw- listen. But it would you would have a much better argument. Don't you, you you're, think? You're, you're making my wife stay here. So. If you're taking care of yourself a hundred percent instead but of but you just still need but you still need your vaccines. I'm sure you do, but mm-hmm. vaccines aren't going to prevent cancer. No, that's true. Right. That's and true. You, there's a lot of diseases. Or that, diabetes or cardiovascular sure. disease. Or and a lot of these diseases yeah. are connected directly to diet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Man. And other lifestyle ch- changes. Yeah. Good to Sed- get to exercising. Se- sedentary life. I try to go on the treadmill for 30 minutes you every try. morning. I do. it. Actually, I'm pretty good about that. Yeah. 30 minutes every morning. Why don't you just treadmill. go for an actual walk? It's more interesting. I do that too. So I do, I do. I do. No, but I do about 30 minutes on the treadmill in the morning and then I, uh, and my, I take a long walk does. with my wife in the evening. Oh, that's good. But it, you know, the, the thing does. that knocks the crap out of you is the travel. Yes. I find that very frustrating because you don't I exercise, do and then you eat, you don't eat well, well, and you don't control the diet as well. So that's. Um, well, I have a solution to that mm. and eat well and exercise. Those, those are the solutions to that. Just yeah. do it. You right. know, I treat it like I'm brushing my teeth. I brush my teeth every day. Yeah. I exercise every day too. Yeah. So when I travel, I don't have an option. When I land, I go to the gym. This is how it goes. I land. I get in my hotel room. I put my shorts on. Yeah, yeah I do I that too. To I do that too. When it's I the only way. No, you yeah. don't. If you have to do it, if you, if you say this is just what gets done, <laughs> right. this is how you do it. Yeah, I try to be really compulsive about that. So Yeah, I have it written out. I know what I'm going to do, mm-hmm. especially if, if, the, 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 if it's great if the hotel has a good gym. The whole, you know, if they have weights and a bunch of different Or I'll run outside if, if we don't have it. You run? Yeah. Do you? Not very well, but. No, uh, but you do? Okay. Yeah. We're going to get you healthy, buddy. Yeah. Can't be pushing only chemicals in injectable forms to facilitate health. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair. Not chemicals, they're vaccines. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's in them? What? It's not, I mean, it's some sort of chemical, no? No, they're antigens, right? They're. Right. they're What's they're the fluid? Ma- macromolecules. What's the liquid stuff? Uh, typically, it would be saline or, you know, salt water. And- right. Well, Sheila, at least we now know what happened to the hamburger, or is it Mayor McCheese? How did uh, I describe him? No, how did I describe <laughs> him in the pre-meeting for this? Uh, grimace. Grimace. <laughs> grimace shaped. Well, that um, interviewing was making me grimace, uh, not what Joe was. Joe took him to school. Uh, and by quietly. the way, um, Joe Rogan is bang on uh, for the last... Hey, folks, that was a clip from the Daily Roundup. That is our live stream show that airs 
from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday to Friday. I'm usually here for four of the shows. Our Alberta team takes over on Fridays. And you know what? You can interact with the hosts. If you give us a small financial donation, we'll read your comment during the live stream. So please go to revelnews.com slash livestream and tune in Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern.